Ooh, it is hot. Mm, I don't know how to Hey guys, this is your friendly neighborhood garage and review guy, Coop from Garage and Reviews. And today we're gonna do something a little bit different than normal. A little bit ago, we asked you guys for your top questions. Basically, ask me anything. This includes gym equipment, training, me personally, Garage and Reviews, anything else. Uh, so there's some weird questions in here, but we're basically taking some of the top ones, the one we've re received the most, and responding to them. We've done this in the past, and it's kind of fun just to like, you know, answer people's questions. Now, first off is one question that you're probably thinking is, Coop, where are you? So we're actually in the guy who's behind the camera, Nathan, the videographer's garage gym. This is his garage gym. One question that comes up a lot. This is probably, I wouldn't say more than any other, but it's a lot, is Coop, what do you do with all the freaking gym equipment you have? Number one is I don't sell it. So we don't sell the equipment, we keep it, uh, we wanna test it, we wanna review it, we wanna test the different iterations. Um, I'm a hoarder, so there's just a lot of variables that play into that. But one thing that we do with it is I give it to friends. And so I'd say about 90% of the things in here are mine. <laughs> and Nathan's getting swollen and big with them. So like this rack is the Omni rack that we've reviewed. There's a treadmill over here, a lat pull down, a leg extension, There's just lots of goodies here. And so I don't have all the place for them up to this point, so we give them to people. However, another question like we've been getting is, like what's the future for Garage and Reviews? What do you wanna do in the future? Like do you wanna keep growing it? What do you want to happen? So one thing I wanna do is I want more people testing the equipment. I wanna have a space where we can have ton of people come in. So as of yesterday, we sent an LOI over to a company, a letter of intent to actually lease a building that's 8,000 square feet. And we're going to fill every little bit of it with gym equipment. Having a facility where we can train, test, compare all the equipment, not have to have it in all different places is going to be absolutely positively ideal. And so we're going to rent that place. In addition to that, I'm moving to a new house. And so my new house has one, a bigger garage, but it also has acreage. And acreage means I'm going to build a standalone shop that's going to rival any home gym in the world, including you, Juji Mufu. So we're gonna have a garage gym, a shop, and also like our mega facility where we can have people come and work out and test the equipment, give us their opinions in addition to mine, and just keep growing and keep doing better content. So. I am absolutely pumped for the future. Another question that's kind of ancillary to the gym equipment that we review is the stuff like involved around in your facility and one specifically is for garage gym owners is their garage door opener. So what opener do they use? What's one I recommend? So I've used quite a few. My favorite by far is not the overhead ones. The overhead ones are okay. They're all pretty similar. There's some that have some smart features. There's actually a few that we're planning on reviewing in the future when we do like a home gym build series. But my favorite by far is the jack mount openers that go on the side. So LiftMaster makes one, Chamberlain, which I think they're the same company. They have a model that goes on the side and actually rotates the jack shaft instead of pulling the door up. And what that does is it frees the entire overhead area up. At my current garage gym, I have one. At my future garage gym, I'm gonna have one. At my kids' future garage gyms, they're gonna have one because it just works so much better than the one that's overhead. It's both quieter and it allows you to lift overhead if the garage door shut. So it makes the space feel bigger. You can do overhead lifts with the garage door shut because you have all this open space, especially with like a two door garage, they work really well. That's what I would suggest. So something we've been getting a lot of question on, one right when it happened and kind of since then is the whole rep fitness going from the pay for shipping model to the free shipping model. Rep fitness for a long time and Titan actually like, they ripped them apart by doing a story and basically like putting a voiceover of them saying you shouldn't care about free shipping and like basically ripped them apart. It was pretty funny. Um, I love to see competition like that. But they basically decided, rep did like, you're no longer gonna pay for shipping. It's gonna be baked into the price and it's gonna be free shipping. Here's what I will say. Number one is years ago when they were doing like the whole model of like trying to instruct and educate the consumer on why free shipping is a bad idea, I told them that was a bad idea. The reason being is we live in the age of Amazon. Rep Fitness is not going to educate the Amazon consumer. Yes, you were paying less. I would say that you were probably paying less when you paid for shipping. But the reality is, 
people don't like to get to the end of their cart and see a price. They like to know that the price they're paying for when they click add to cart is the price it's gonna come out with sans tax. So because of that, I think the free shipping idea from a business perspective for Rep Fitness, just purely business perspective, I think is a good idea. I think people like the idea of just seeing one price. So overall, I think it's a wash. It's good for the company. It's not all that great for the consumer, but I think most consumers could care less. They just wanna know it's free shipping. Free, right? So someone asked, what's one piece of equipment I could buy that could be like my total gym? Like all in one, like one piece, it'd be tonal. Like tonal is just that freaking good. I've talked about this a long time. Like tonal is just, it's fantastic. I'm like looking off in the distance, like, you know, like thinking about my wife, like, ah, but thinking about tonal. It's like that good. Like tonal is just, it's incredible. It's so easy to use. Like I find myself, just throwing in extra workouts off my programming because I want to use tonal. Like I just want to use it. It's just fun. It's enjoyable. It's easy to use and it's all encapsulated in that one piece of equipment. If you don't want to spend the money on something like that, dude, I think you can just get a barbell and plates. I think we make this too complicated sometimes. Like you don't really have to have a bench to get strong on press. You can do floor press. Like it's a nice thing to have or adjustable dumbbells is another option. If you just want one piece of equipment, in my opinion, that's the way to go. But the reality is you're not just gonna buy one. You're gonna end up with just like everybody else. I'm just gonna get in a little bit. No, you will end up buying a ton of freaking crap because it starts with this. Nathan, for example, bought some dumbbells. Two months later, you suddenly have all this crap. It's because it's just like that need for more and you like wanna add more versatile things and stuff like that. So you may think, I just want one piece of equipment. I'm a minimalist, I'll start small, but you're not. You're an American, you're gonna buy a lot of stuff. All right, biker or air bike, which is better? Personally, I would buy a biker. I really like the biker. Personally, I like using the biker more than the air bike because I can do more longer steady state stuff. So more list type of training. You can do hit with it as well. But for me doing lower, like slower steady state stuff on an air bike, it's just not, it's just, it's harder. So because it's harder, I don't feel like I can go as long like it's better for like short duration hit workouts, maybe 10 to 15 minute intervals. But if it were me and I was only gonna choose one, I personally go with a bike erg, but I know there's a lot of people that they like the air bike and they would go with that. So I think it's a toss up. Like they're both extremely good and extremely good pieces of equipment. And ultimately in an ideal world, you'd have both, but I understand most people just want one. So. I think for most people, an air bike would probably be a better option because most people aren't doing a ton of steady state stuff. They're doing a lot of hit and like combining it with other workouts. So that's why I choose that. Okay, somebody asked what brand has great equipment but slept on. This is like, I think I may have answered this somewhere else, but without a doubt, it's American Barbell. American Barbell is absolutely slept on. American Barbell is making damn good bumpers. In addition to that, all their equipment, their dumbbells are amazing, their barbells are amazing. Literally, every time I grab an American Barbell bar, I'm like, this is a dang good bar. Because like the sleeves, they're so precise, the starts and stops on the knurling tooling, like everything about it is just like, this is very well done. And it's not overpriced. American Barbell, definitely a company that gets slept on. Best training shorts, definitely. I, I wear a lot of training shorts. Basically every day I'm wearing different training shorts, like my freaking feel like hey arnold like i go to my closet and it's just like all right black training shorts today sweet my personal favorite are the go ruck shorts they're not i don't hear a lot of people talking about them they're made in america they have a sick made in america patch they've got liners i really like the go ruck shorts in addition to that the 10,000 shorts are absolutely amazing somebody asked what time i normally train i train very specifically some of you are going to hate me for this i train at 10 30 a.m every single day that's my go-to time. The way that works is I do intermittent fasting. I have a coffee. I take a couple mag, uh, slow mag tablets. Um, that's all I have in the morning. I then have some BCAAs. I use BioForce Steel, I think is what it is. I got it from Peter Atia. It was his recommendation. I use those BCAAs at 10.30 when I'm training. Intra workout, I do my training immediately after. I either have a protein shake or I have my first meal and then I have a protein shake thereafter and that's how I train. I then often do like some sort of cardio later on in the day. I don't do cardio in the morning. That's like strength training. And then I'll do some sort of like 10 minute session. 
15 minute session, depending on what I want to get done. And then oftentimes I'll get on the treadmill while I'm working or I'll do some sort of walking three times, 10 minutes a day. That's my training session. And I'm, I'm like sticking to it. Like I found a rhythm like a few years ago and I just freaking love it. Um, so I'm a creature of habit and that's what works for me. All right. And then the last question, will tech be the standard in home gyms in 2022? In 2022, no, it's not gonna be the standard. It's too short of a date to like have adoption, but will it be the future of training? Yes, I've said this in so many places. I've had to argue with so many people. I don't know why people get so upset about this. It doesn't matter the industry. Tech takes over. Fitness is the same. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, I don't wanna you know, have tech in my home gym. There'll never be tech in my home gym. The reality is you're messaging that on your phone that you then use to play music and record your workouts in your garage. Will it be in all the different equipment? Eventually, yeah. And I think in most people's gyms, it will be. Will Apple be making equipment? Microsoft? I don't necessarily think so. But I do think there will be companies that are equipment manufacturers that will either partner or buy or license the tech, the software to combine and to make an amazing piece of training equipment. Think about it, if you had like a rogue Ohio power bar with the capability of like, let's say a tech company, like let's just say it was Microsoft and they combined to work together for both the amazing hardware side on like amazing early on a barbell with the amazing like tracking and 3D tracking and all these different things, uh, biometrics and like, like, I don't know, gyrometers in there that are able to tell how fast the bar is going, accelerometers, tracking reps, all these different things. It would be incredible. And that's the future. I like to say it a lot because I want people to know, like I'm taking a stance, it's going to happen. And then in the future, people can either say, Coop, you were absolutely wrong. Or what they will say is Coop was Notre Dame and he saw it coming. <laughs> so that's how it is. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the questions. I like doing these. These are fun. Uh, if you have more, let me know in the comments and we'll see if we can shout out both in the comments and maybe in the future. If you like this sort of stuff, you like gyms, make sure you subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you.